All right, so anyway, I, I, I got to move past it. All right, I, I love the Panthers so much. I was I was just disappointed, man. I It's weird to me. I Anyway, all right, I got I to gotta move past it. They're back in action, by the way, Wednesday night against Boston. So they're going to they're gonna lose four in a row because Boston never loses. All right, anyway, really, like, why can't all the teams, hey, you got the Dolphins. Why can't all the teams be good? Why can't we have everything? Can I be selfish for once? Why can't all my teams be good? Why can't the Dolphins, Heat, and Panthers all be awesome? Nope. Not allowed to happen. All right. All right. But hey, even though the Dolphins were off this week, you still had a ton of action in the National Football League. Week 11 wraps up tonight. 49ers at Cardinals. Obviously, it doesn't have anything to do with the Dolphins. We don't care about the 49ers anymore because we traded the pick away for Bradley Chubb. Okay, great. But a whole lot of action took place in the NFL yesterday. Let's get to our Week 11 NFL rundown. Okay, so we'll start things off. Falcons and Bears. The Falcons, they're hanging around in that NFC East, man. Falcons, they are now 5-6 and six after a 27-24 win over the Chicago Bears. I know Justin Fields got hurt late in that game. Fields, amazing fantasy player now. He was 14 at 21. He had 153 yards, touchdown, and an interception. But how about on the ground? He's doing it again. 18 rushes, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Another big fantasy performance for Justin Fields. The uh, the Falcons, again, though, they win 27-24. to 24. They are a half game back. Amazing. Of Tampa in the NFC South, which is a wretched division. The Ravens. This is a major disappointment if you're a Ravens fan, right? The Ravens beat the Panthers 13-3, a game that I think was 3-0 at halftime. The Ravens improved to 7-3, Panthers dropped to 3-8. Lamar Jackson, 24 for 33, 209 yards and an interception. He had 31 rushing yards and a touchdown on the ground. The Ravens are currently fourth in the AFC Improving to seven and three. I mean, everyone is seven and three in the AFC. The Bills also seven and three. Now got up to a slow start yesterday. They were down 10-3 against Cleveland. Josh Allen, he was very frustrated. This game was played in Detroit. The Bills are from Buffalo. The Browns are from Cleveland. The game was in Detroit. Now I know the game was sold out, and and the it was a very uh, it was a majority Bills crowd. Even though Cleveland, Cleveland's not far from Detroit. I think it's just a couple hours, a couple hour drive away. But the Bills, they beat the Browns 31-23. Josh Allen, 18 for 27, 197 yards and a touchdown. And then MVP caliber numbers. <coughs> he's, he's not going to be in the MVP conversation this year. We know the MVP conversation. It's Tua and Mahomes. That's the MVP conversation. I, I'm, Hey, that's, that's where it is. And you also had Amari Cooper. Big fantasy day. Eight catches, 113 yards, and two touchdowns. He usually does nothing on the road. He had a big game yesterday. So the Browns now, they are off next week, I believe. Are they off next week? Um, but um, they're getting Deshaun Watson back. Is it for week 13? Okay, so it's one more game. One more game that he's got to miss. But they're 3-7. and seven. They're not going anywhere. The Bills are now 7-3. and three. The Commanders, that's the team in Washington. They're now 6-5 and five with a 23-10 win over the Texans. The Texans are here this week, they are now 1-8-1. One, one. They're the worst team in football. Nothing really noteworthy fantasy football-wise. Antonio Gibson had 18 carries for 72 yards, 3 catches, 31 yards. The Eagles pull it out late against the Colts. The Eagles are 9-1. The Colts 4-6-1. Jeff Saturday was so close to being 2-0. and And everyone was going to be... Bill Cowher was going to be so mad that Jeff Saturday would have been 2-0. and But it wasn't meant to be. The Eagles beat the Colts 17-16. Jalen Hurts, 18 for 25, 190 yards and a touchdown. He had 16 rushes for 85 yards and a touchdown. So good fantasy day there because of the rushing with Jalen Hurts. But I don't know. E the Eagles, I feel like a kind of a Fugazi 9-1. Not very impressed. But 9-1 is 9-1. That's right. I own that city. The Patriots. This was the talk of the day, right? The Patriots win 10-3 in as bad a football game you're ever going to see. We were punished. There was no Dolphins football. And our punishment was 
You will sit. It, it was. It was like. It was like Little Alex with the ultra violence in Clockwork Orange. We were sitting there with our eyelids pried open, watching Patriots Jets. It was terrible. Patriots improved to six and four. The Jets dropped to six and four. And the big story of the game, obviously, was on the final possession. The Jets, they're trying to run out the clock. They punt it away. But instead of punting it out of bounds, you get an 84-yard punt return for a touchdown. Patriots win 10-3. Wilson, Zach Wilson, who is probably the worst quarterback in the NFL. Somehow, Mac Jones was not the worst quarterback in this game. Wilson was 9 for 22 for 77 yards. Mac Jones was 23 for 27 for 246 yards. Zach Wilson taking no blame, no accountability after the game. And the Patriots and Jets are now both 6-4. and Record-wise in the AFC East, that was probably the result that you wanted as a Dolphin fan. The Saints beat the Rams 27-20 in a game that really nobody cares about. The Saints are 4-7 and seven now. The Rams are 3-7. and seven. Andy Dalton, 21 for 25, 260 yards and three touchdowns. Boy, the Rams are shit if they're allowing Andy Dalton at this point in his career to do that. Uh, Chris Olave for the fantasy football owner. Five catches, 102 yards, and a touchdown. There you go. The Lions beat the Giants 31-18. Don't look now. The Lions looking like a competent team. Four and six. The Giants now seven and three. Very bad loss for the G-Men. You figure, hey... That's an easy way to, to, to get a, a, another victory against a Lions team and in New York. So instead of being 8-2 and two and the Giants being right behind Philadelphia, they now dropped a 7-3 and three and they're the sixth seed in the NFC. That was a very damaging loss. If the Giants missed the playoffs, that's the game you're going to go back and look at. The Raiders, in overtime, beat the Broncos 22-16. to 16. Uh <clears throat> Both teams are three and seven. You thought the NFC West was going to be uh, AFC West, excuse me, was going to be the best division in football. It sucks. You know the Chargers are average. Raiders and Broncos are terrible. KC has the best record in the AFC. Everybody knows the AFC East is the best division in football now. But Devontae Adams caught the touchdown in overtime to win it. He had seven catches for 141 yards, two touchdowns. David Carr, 23 for 37. 300, actually, I think he's Derek. I always confuse him with his brother. Derek Carr, 23 for 37, 307 yards, and two touchdowns. He cried last week after the loss. This week, they win. There you have it. The Cowboys, probably the stunner of the day. A 40-3 to win at the Vikings. That's right, he was in Minnesota. Cowboys win 40-3. to Cowboys are now 7-3, and so they're kind of hanging around in the NFC East. They're fifth overall in the NFC. The Vikings, 8-2. and two, Their seven-game win streak is snapped. And now they are second. They jumped into a first-place tie last week after Philadelphia lost. Now they're back all by themselves, second place in the NFC. Dak Prescott, 22 for 25, 276 yards and two touchdowns. Kirk Cousins, 12 of 23, just 105 yards. This was a shocker of a performance. And... The Cowboys fan, you're super excited about that, but if I'm a Cowboys fan, and I'm not, but if I'm a Cowboys fan, I'm almost pissed off where it's, how did I lose that game last week to the Packers? We're up two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Should be sitting here eight and two, talking about, you know, best one game back of the best record in the NFC. So big shocker, but I'm a little bit annoyed if I'm a Cowboy fan. The Bengals. Bengals are starting to get going. Don't look now, but the AFC champion Bengals, a 37-30 win against the Steelers. Bengals are 6-4. They are now in the seventh and final playoff spot in the AFC. Steelers dropped to 3-7. Joe Burrow, 24 for 39, 355 yards. He had four touchdowns and two interceptions. T. Higgins had a big game. And finally, Sunday night football last night, the Chiefs. 8-2 after a 30-27 win over the Chargers. The Chargers dropped to 5-5. Five five. The Dolphins, you needed Herbert to, to do a solid for you, but he threw an interception late in that game. Mahomes, 20 for 34, 329 yards, three touchdowns. Kelsey, six catches for 115 yards. He caught all three of Mahomes' touchdowns, and that right there is your Week 11 NFL Rundown. Great week in the NFL. Weird, but great. Tonight, 
We'll cap off the week, Monday Night Football. Zazzle Mansion Fan Room, small TV. You got the Cardinals hosting the 49ers. And I got fantasy football implications. I'm not going to tell you about it because nobody cares about my fantasy football team. Nobody cares about your fantasy football team. But tonight, you got the 49ers who are, they are 7th in the NFC. Uh, Arizona's done. I mean, come on. But the 49ers, this is obviously a big game for them. So you got stuff going on. And of course, all the gambling. Gambling is so much fun. Everybody should gamble. Okay. So anyway, I, I do have a couple things for you here that I want to get to on the NBA. Uh, a couple noteworthy things happened in the NBA over the weekend. Number one, you had an incident Friday night in Philadelphia. So... The 76ers beat the Bucks, And Giannis had a, a rough go at the free throw line. He was 4 for 15 from the free throw line. I think the game before it, he was 4 for 11. But he was 4 for 15 that night from the free throw line. And so after the game, he pulled the move where he, he wants to stay on the floor and shoot free throws. Now, this happens... I'm not going to say all the time, but star players sometimes will pull this move where after the game, they they go on the court and they want to get in some more work. And very famously, you remember it was here, something like, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, the Heat beat the Lakers and very famously Kobe Bryant for like another 90 minutes after the game. I'm doing the post-game show. I'm doing the Heat post-game show. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm doing the Heat post-game show, and right in front of me, during my show, Kobe Bryant is getting in work. And and the team bus has to wait for him. I mean, it's Kobe. They're going to wait. The team bus has to wait for him. He had a rough night, and he's, you know, the Heat just won, and he wants to get in some extra work. Everybody remembers that. It was, like, a lot was made of it. It was really cool, actually. So, star players will do this every now and then. Giannis. Wanted to do, he was terrible from the free throw line, so I wanted to get in some free throw work before he got on the bus and before he left. And what happened here is, everybody saw the video where you had these workers who were, now, you know, you're taking down the hoop, you're getting stuff down on top of the hoop, and they got a ladder, you got to take down, you know, the camera, the shot clock, all that stuff, and then they're going to move the hoop. Who knows, they, they may have had, you know... The next day, the Flyers may have been playing. Maybe the next day there's a concert. Whatever it is, you know. This is what happens in these arenas overnight. They change over the floor. And you see Giannis. He's telling the guys that, that he wants to work. Th these workers are telling him no. And then eventually he, he shoves the ladder out of the way. The ladder falls over. And now it's a whole big thing. And, and if you're Giannis, look. I'm going to start by saying this. If you're Giannis, you can't do that. God forbid. And there were some people there. Not a couple. But God forbid, and he didn't try to push over the ladder, but he very forcefully moved the ladder out of the way, and then it fell over. God forbid that ladder falls on someone, you got a major problem. Major, major problem. And so I got to start off by saying, if you're honest, you can't do that. All right? And he knows that. And Giannis really seems like one of the all-time good guys. So I'm just telling you right now, I'm going to wind up giving Giannis a pass over this whole thing. But you saw that video. And then there's more footage that comes out of what took place before that. So Giannis is actually on the floor and he wants to get in some work before he leaves. And everything's fine. Until Montrez Harrell shows up. Who, who is a known troublemaker. Is looking for a fight. And, and really seems like one of the top douchebags in the league. So Montrez Harrell, show, I mean, you remember in the bubble a couple years ago, calling Luca a eh, bitch-ass white boy. Yeah. Montrez Harrell is always looking for a fight. He's on a different team every year, all right? One of the all-time douchebags in the league. And so Montrez Harrell shows up, just takes the ball from Giannis. Like, he, he was telling Giannis to get off the floor. He wants to work. Giannis said to him, hey, let, let's, let's work together. We can work in, whatever, you know? And Montrez Harrell takes, the, takes his ball like he's a child. Takes his ball and walks the other end of the court. Starts shooting around. <coughs> and Giannis like, what the hell's going on? So, and, and look, Giannis knows. Montrez Harrell's looking for a fight. Because he's Montrez Harrell. And that's what he does. 
so Giannis then goes back into the visiting locker room, I assume, comes back out with another ball. And at this point, now you got the guys with the ladder. They're trying to take down the hoop. They're trying to get their work in. He's asking them, I assume he's asking them, you know, if he could still work here. They're telling him no, which... And then you get the pushing of the ladder, and the ladder falls over, and now it's a whole thing. Look, does it suck for those workers that they're going to have to wait to take down the court another 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever it is, until Giannis is done? Yep, that sucks. They want to get home to their families. They want to get all their work done. Although, there's got to be other stuff that they have to do in the arena that they could have then done first and then come back, I would assume. But that's not the point. If they got to wait another 15, 20, 30 minutes until they can go home, that sucks. But guess what? Tough shit. It's tough. The player, who also is a league MVP, is one of the faces of the NBA. But it doesn't even have to be a star player. All these people in the building, all these workers, they have jobs because of the NBA and because of these players. And if Giannis wants to get in some extra work and it's going to delay those guys night by 15, 20, 30 minutes, they're going to have to eat a turd burger. And it, like sucks, but they're going to have to eat a turd burger and wait for Giannis to finish. That is what it is. Like, those dudes are in no position to tell Giannis, no, you're not allowed to be here. We're working. We're taking down the hoop. You got to kind of eat that one if you're the workers. Yes, I'm giving Giannis a pass. Even though you can't push the ladder over. You didn't mean to push it over, but you can't do that. That's a bad job. The workers, though, like, I'm telling you right now what's winding, what is happening today or what happened the next day or that night or whatever. Those workers were reprimanded. They were. And they were told next time you need to let him he needs you need to let him get in work. All those guys have jobs because of the NBA, because of the NBA players, because of the game. Sucks that your night's gonna be about twenty or thirty minutes longer. Is what it is. You gotta let him work. You gotta let him do his thing. It is what it is. MVP of the league. Come on. Come on. And by the way, none of this scenario happens if not for that child Montrez Harrell. Total do- douchebag. Takes his ball. Doesn't want to let him practice? Come on, man. <clears throat> and so Montrez Harrell, after the game, took to Twitter. I mean, good luck reading through this. There's not a single period. But here's Montrez Harrell on Twitter. Starts it off with, well, the first word is A-Y-E, so I guess it's A? Yeah, I guess A. The grammar's rough. All right, again, no periods here, so I'm going to try and decipher it. A, make sure you get the complete story. I asked the man... Can he get off the court so I can work out? They had to change the court over. He ignore me. So, hey, that's what you get. Respect is respect. Good night. He he sucks. But that was a huge story over the weekend. You can't push over the ladder if you're honest. You got to be more careful. Uh, Does it suck for the workers? Yes, but I guarantee you the workers were reprimanded. You got to let Giannis use the hoop if he wants to. Your night's just going to be a little bit longer, unfortunately. All right. The other NBA story over the weekend, and we obviously have to hit on this. Kyrie Irving made his return yesterday. The Nets, and and by the way, Ben Simmons in back-to-back games looking like a real basketball player. And I think their next game is in Philadelphia. But Ben Simmons looking like a real basketball player again, and Kyrie Irving returned yesterday. He struggled. I think he was 5 for 14. I think he had 14 points. But Kyrie Irving returned yesterday (coughs) from missing the previous eight games. Now, Kyrie Irving, he sat down with SNY's Ian Begley and gave a more extended, like, apology slash explanation of what happened, what took place. And so let me me read this to you. And you know I've, I've been very hard on Kyrie. Uh, he's, I I think he's a cancerous player. I do not think he's a winning player. I think his history shows you that. And I I mean, look, yes, he, you know, he won a championship playing next to LeBron. Hit hit a huge shot, but everywhere else he's been when he wasn't with LeBron, he leaves the team, uh, he leaves and they're better off. But anyway, 
You know how I feel about what Kyrie did. Obviously being Jewish. But let's hear out this explanation, right? You gotta be fair. Quote, I'm not, this is an interview with S and Whiny and Begley. Quote, I'm not anti-Semitic. I never have been. I don't have hate in my heart for the Jewish people or anyone that identifies as a Jew. I'm not anti-Jewish or any of that. And it's been difficult to sit at home with my family with them seeing all of this and having questions. I'll interrupt for a second. That's what he should have said from the get-go when he was asked about it. Instead of being confrontational with the media and being difficult. That, that right, just that right there is what he should have said. But there's a lot more. The part that hasn't been hard is explaining myself because I know who I am. I know what I represent. But I think the difficult aspect is just processing all this, understanding the power of my voice, the influence I have. I am no one's idol, but I am a human being that wants to make impact and change. In order to do that, I have to live responsibly and set a greater example for our youth, for my generation and the older generation. Uh, he continued on with, I just really want to focus on the hurt that I caused or the impact that I made within the Jewish community. Putting some type of threat or assumed threat on the Jewish community. I just want to apologize deeply for all my actions, for the time that it's been since the post was first put up. I've had a lot of time to think, but my focus initially, if I could do it over, would be to heal and repair a lot of my close relationships with my Jewish relatives, brothers, and sisters. Uh, it was a learning journey, to be honest with you. It was a lot of hurt that needed to be healed, a lot of conversations that needed to be had, and a lot of reflections. And I got a chance to do that with some great people from the Jewish community, from the black community, from the white community. I've had so many conversations with all of our races and cultures and religious groups of people. Uh, just try to find a better way, a better perspective on how we live a more harmonious life. I'm a man who stands for peace. I don't condone any hate speech or any prejudice. And I want to be in a position where I'm being, and I want to be in a position where I'm being, where I don't want to be in a position where I'm being misunderstood or where I stand in terms of anti-Semitism or any hate for that matter for anybody in this world. So this is what should have been made clear from the get-go. We would have avoided this whole situation. I got to be honest with you. It's a pretty good apology. It's a pretty good explanation. And I'm good I'm I'm good with moving on. I am. Now, I will say the clock like okay, you know, we're we're one day he returned yesterday. We're one day without incident. Okay? Like the clock has started, we are one day without incident. There is gonna be something else that his history tells us. There will be something else that comes up that prevents him from playing basketball. His history is a giant indicator of that. We know that. But as far as this situation, I think you, I think you got to forgive and move on. I think you got to accept the apology, especially if you're a Jewish person. I've talked about this before. That was a pretty good apology. He spent time in the Jewish community talking to people, realizing what he did was hurtful. Uh, could have, pro could have, did cause problems in the Jewish community. Certainly was a whole Jewish person versus black person thing, which is, which is the worst part because Jews and blacks should be best friends. They should be best friends. But you had that whole dynamic. And if you're not willing to accept his apology and accept that he is willing to learn from it and move forward, then there's no reason for anyone who has done something bad or said something bad and then tried to rehabilitate themselves and become better and learn more from their mistake and you're still not going to accept them, accept their apology, forgive them, then what's the point in them being sorry? What's the point in them actually trying to turn around and do the right thing if you're still not going to let them move forward, if you're not going to accept them, if you're not going to allow them to rehabilitate, if you're not going to accept that, then there's no point for that kind of person to want to learn and grow and be better. You can't then turn around and say, yeah, but you said this back then. Well, he's learning now what he did and said was wrong. So I, I got to accept, and I don't like Kyrie Irving, man. I'm never going to like Kyrie Irving. I totally think he's a cancerous teammate. But I'm very willing to accept him speaking to Jewish people, him speaking to all these religions, and trying to learn and be better about it and move forward and not be a hateful person. Because if I'm not willing to, if I'm not willing to accept that, 
in anyone who, who like even what Myers Leonard, you know, I, I forgive him. I very forgive him. Because if I'm not willing to accept these people who thought one thing and then they realized that was wrong and, and now they're, they're becoming a better person. If I'm not willing to accept that, what's the point in them becoming a better person then? So I'm, I, I got to move on from it. I'm ready to move on from it. Well, he returned last night. That was obviously a big deal. Okay, so you know what that means. We wrap every show with it. Let's do big deal or not a big deal. Come on. All right. So I got a few things for you here for big deal, not a big deal today on a Monday, week number four, Zaslo show. So I saw this yesterday trending everywhere on Twitter. People were very, very upset. The, the green Power Ranger, the guy who played the green Power Ranger, Jason David Frank, 49 years old, passed away yesterday. TMZ reported he passed away. He was best known for being the green and the white. I got, can't leave out the white. For being the green and the white Power Ranger. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not exactly sure. I saw, oh, well, yeah, it says here by suicide. Terrible. That's a big deal, obviously. And there, there was an outpouring of love and emotion for this guy. Uh, people were very upset to see that news yesterday. So that's a big deal. That's a sad story. Also, big deal or not a big deal, tonight, during Monday Night Football, the final trailer. Now, you know how I feel about movie trailers. I don't love movie trailers. <coughs> I don't want, excuse me, I don't want anything spoiled for me, especially when it comes to superhero movies. So I, I don't really like seeing the trailers. I want to go in and be totally surprised. But the final trailer for the movie Avatar is going to be released tonight during Monday Night Football. This is not a big deal. Not because I don't care to watch all the movie trailers. And if we're, if we're throwing out three, four trailers for Avatar, then you can see the whole movie before it even comes out. But this is not a big deal because I don't care about Avatar. I don't get it, man. I've tried watching Avatar. I, I, I get 20 minutes in, I'm like, I don't get it. I don't like this movie. So, final trailer for Avatar. Not a big deal. How about this weekend? Big deal or not a big deal? AEW Full Gear was this past Saturday night. Now, if it's still real to me, if you didn't catch this weekend's episodes, obviously it's on your podcast, wherever you get your podcast, Zazlo Show 2.0, on the weekends, on Saturdays, it's still real to me. Me and my co-host, Joey Levin, we recap all the big stories in pro wrestling. It's also on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Show. You get to see this punum. And you can watch the whole show there as well. We gave you a bonus episode this weekend. You had the regular Saturday, It's Still Real to Me, and Sunday, a reaction show to Saturday night's AEW Full Gear. So make sure you go check that out. And MJF, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, top Jew. Kyrie's so mad that he won. MJF, new AEW champion after beating John Moxley on Saturday night. Now, there was a little bit of cheating involved. William Regal... He turned heel, he double-crossed Mox, he slid MJF the brass knucks, and he knocked him out. And the MJF era is upon us. A Jewish world champion! Now, it's not like there's never been one. Goldberg, anyone? Come on, we know that. But MJF is the new AEW champion. That's a big deal. And finally, I got one more for you ass here. Today, now maybe you're listening right now, maybe you're watching on the YouTube channel. It could be during the match, it could be after the match, but we're few, just a few hours away. World Cup began yesterday. Uh, you had Ecuador beat Qatar earlier today. Uh, last I checked, England was up 3-0 on Iran. They're both in the United States' group play. U.S. Wales. It gets going today. World Cup. That's right. Of course that's a big deal. Are you kidding? I'm super pumped up for this game. U.S. Wales. Let's get this thing started off in the right foot. Let's get those points. Get a win today. And it all sets up for Friday. Black Friday. U.S., England, know what that means. That's a big deal. And that right there is a Monday edition. A big deal or not a big deal. All right, thanks again. We're getting more and more sponsors, obviously. Title sponsor of Zaslow Show 2.0. Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. You got any kind of injury, slip and fall, whatever your accident is, I'm sending you to Anna Jar and Levine because if you're listening right now, you're one of my best friends. And Anna Jar and Levine, I know that they're going to help you, all right? 
Glenn Levine, Mark Anajar, Ellie Anajar. Those are my guys. They believe in me, and they're going to help you with any issues you got with your injury, all right? So 800-747-FREE, 3733. Anajar and Levine, accident attorneys. And everybody, welcome aboard Briny Irish Pub, brinypubpompano.com. That's my new spot, all right, where Atlantic meets the Atlantic. Atlantic Boulevard all the way east until you run into the ocean. You got Briny right there. Live music every night. I'm going to be there this Sunday for the Dolphins and Texans. They got the NFL Sunday ticket. Come watch the Dolphins in every Dolphin game with me at Briny Irish Pub, brinypubpompano.com. Thanks to everybody involved in putting together the show today. Great job by everyone involved. Appreciate you. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Zaslow Show 2.0. You know what that means. <laughs>